everyone and welcome to another episode of the Simply Complex channel and we are doing a very special zero touch, that's right, a zero touch example and I want to get everyone's feet wet on this one because it is a lot of fun. I'm going to show you everyone how to create the very first zero touch note. Let's get right into it. What we want to do is we want to actually simulate a dynamo geometry point. So I'm going to expect everyone to be dynamo users. If you're not, go out and get yourself dynamo because it's super awesome and fun. And then double click on your canvas and in the code block you're just going to basically type point dot by coordinates. I'm going to show you how to first do this in a in a uh, design script and then how to do it using zero touch. So you'd make an object which is point and then by coordinates is your constructor and then you basically have variables. In our case it would be x comma y comma z. If they're not defined the code block will say I'm not defined, my input port, my, my variables aren't defined, they will become input ports for x, y, and z. This is the this is the design script way of doing it. We're going to recreate this, but you make a zero touch node. Zero touch basically is a way to make custom nodes using Dynamo and using C sharp, and it's really simple. All right, so let's just remember this point dot by coordinates x comma y comma z in parentheses. So what you need to do is if if you're not a C sharp coder or a .NET coder, don't worry about it. You're going to find out how simple this is to get your feet wet. And of course, this probably would be the most simple example you could make with zero touch, but it's to kind of illustrate everyone to get their feet wet with this stuff. Go out and get yourself Visual Studio. It's completely free. And I like to use Visual Studio 2015. And then you're basically going to start a new project. And then you're basically going to do a new class library. Uh, now the name of the, the, name of the, the solution, let's call this... Uh, my first zero touch and then you want to pick a location I guess in our case let's see I'll call this zero touch 101 as my folder and that's what you'll be creating this is also the name of your solution my first zero touch and then we hit OK and then it's gonna break down this template just like this uh, alright so it says namespace my first zero touch public class class one I suppose that's okay for now um, with the namespace in the public class now in the public class you can't just go ahead and type point dot <laughs> hold on let's see if we can do it point dot oh it's not gonna let me this intelligent typing point oh boy I guess it's not doing it yeah it's not gonna let me do it let's swing back over to dynamo and copy this and I'm not going to normally build them like this but I do want to illustrate that the core of the programming is pretty simple so you can't just type in the class which is where you're gonna have all your programming point dot by coordinates x comma y comma z because there's no there's no context to this at all zero touch has no idea what a point is you have to kind of direct it around so basically you need to say you need to make some major references by using um, using statements uh, and I encourage everyone to go uh, to the zero touch um, zero touch github page that the dynamo team has created it can explain about the zero touch and what references so I'm gonna add these in and then we'll I'll join back with you in a moment okay we're back I got the using statements and I got the proper references going this namespace name and the class is called class one I suppose that's okay for now I just want to get into the guts of this thing which is all your all your uh, programming is going to happen within your class. A class is basically a collection of methods. We'll talk about methods in a moment. But what I want to emphasize is you can't just type point dot by coordinates because because uh, C sharp is not going to know what you're talking about. You actually need to turn the point dot by coordinates into a object. You actually are allowed to do that in Design Script as well. 
So in the code block, you could type, you could top type d dyn, let's see, d point equals. You could do that because later you may want to use dynamo point. And so you can turn this into an object and you can make it equal to something. So in this case, we said dynamo point. In this case, it's just a variable, but it's just to emphasize that you can make it equal to something. And in that, ca in that case, you want to also do it uh, because you need to turn it into an object in zero touch. So we will do the same thing. We'll say d point and we'll say equals. And in that case, we just turned it into an object. But with design script, I mean, with zero touch, you don't really design. Uh, C sharp doesn't know what that is. Anytime you have a variable, you always have to define its type. And zero touch has no idea what type this D point is, even though it says point dot by equal to point dot by coordinates. So what you want to do is you want to declare a type and a space, and then say D point because and then you always want to make your statements end with a semicolon now that you say d point point space d point and then d it designates the type and now you're ready to use the variable um, another pr another thing is this is basically an object but you haven't defined anything else uh, in c sharp it always needs to know what it's doing and what it's returning so in that case, under a class, you have to actually define a method. And it's pretty simple. So all you have to do is say public. You just have to say public. And then static. And then, then you have to declare what type it is. In this case, it's always what do you want to make, what do you want to return in the output port? You want to return a point because we're making a point. It's pretty simple, right? Okay, the next thing you need to do is you need to name this method. The name of the method is also the name of your node, which is super amazing cool. So I'm going to call it uh, D point node because we know that's the name of the node. And then you put parentheses and you put in your inputs or what we call variables. And these are also the input ports. So just like any variable, I cannot say X comma Y comma Z because I have to define what type it is so if you think about it you have to think okay what type of input do i have if they say x it really is a number so in c sharp that's called a double that stands for double precision so you just say double space x comma and then and then double and then space y and you're just basically declaring these as doubles uh, because anytime you use a variable, you always have to declare its type. Once you kind of wrap your head around that concept, it's pretty simple. Now, there's one more thing you have to do. So you have defined the namespace. It kind of gave it to you. The class, which is a collection of methods. The method, public static, and then point. That is the type you're returning uh, at the output port d point node is the name of the input port and then uh, excuse me is the name of the ver uh, node itself and then the input ports okay we said point dot by coordinates we made the constructor we had to turn it into an object with d point and we had to because we're using a variable we have to define what type it is the only last thing we need to do now that it's creating a point is c sharp says what do you want me to do with this and inside a method, you have to return it. You have to return it. And so what are you going to return? Returning means that you're sending something to the output port. So what do you want to send to the output port? The point. So you just do this. You just say a return. Really simple. And then D point. D point because that's what we're returning. Pretty simple. And I'm getting some errors here, and the reason is because I noticed that my my method is not enclosed in curly braces. <laughs> Every method has to be enclosed within curly braces. Still getting other errors here. I notice that when you return, you have to return 
the name of the object. So I'm returning D point and I think maybe that's it. Oh, um, the variables all have the same syntax or uh, the same capitalization because it is case sensitive. All right, so that's basically it. So you got your namespace, you've got your public class, your class, and we could change this. Uh, I suppose we should change this. We should call this uh, D. We should call this uh, D geometry. The class name. The class is a collection of methods. The method is method is basically the node that's created. It is also the method name is also the name of the node, and and then you have to declare its type, and then you put in the variables. One more thing I should mention here is in the inside of Dynamo, you could also put in defaults, and it's really simple to do that inside of zero touch when you de when you have your variables uh, in your method all you have to do is set them equal to a value so in this case and it has to be the same as the type so we're gonna set them equal to doubles something double type which it happen to be numbers so in this case our default would be one comma one comma one so when we load the node in and we create it then it will put a node a point at one comma one comma one pretty simple huh all right, so let's see how this works in Dynamo. We need to basically build a solution, and it should say solution succeeded. We pop over to Dynamo. We come over to this Add button that is below our menu, and we say Import Library. Then we're going to navigate to our, our solution, and then it's usually sitting in the bin debug. Um, there's times when it won't and then you load in the DLL. Once you load in the DLL, the name of the solution or the name of the DLL shows up as the library name. And then under that, the first one, uh, okay, that's the library name. It's Then it's the name of the namespace and under the name of the namespace is the name of the class. Under the name of the class, if you remember, was the method just like here. So see how this lines up? So this is the name of the solution which was called which was called my first zero touch dot DLL and then this happens to have the same name but it's my first zero touch is the namespace and then D geometry is the class and then the method name which was D point nude is the name of the actual node. We'll talk about D geometry uh, and this plus symbol in another episode and why it's basically doing that but since this is all exposed it's showing that so then we click on that and we basically got our we basically got our custom node and you can see it is loading in the defaults and you can also see that it shows it is a double and default value one which is super awesome and amazing and cool the really nice thing about zero touch is that when you have a value it is all managed by zero touch so you could have a list if you wanted to you could also run um, if you wanted to you could also run uh, ranges because it will manage the lists automatically which is really nice too you see that so that's a lot of fun to kind of play with and you can see so there you have it. That is your first zero touch node. Really simple. This node is a child of this programming, which is just basically this little piece of code right there. At its core, it is basically this piece of code. And even still at its core, it is just this piece of code. But you can't just type that in. As you can see, uh, it basically needs to be surrounded by its context which is what are you going to return what type am I and that's how you basically set that up and if you notice these amazing parallels that happen between zero touch and a dynamo node is quite honestly amazing to me because you can see that 
the method name of node is method name of node there is the name of the node and then the input var the, Im the variables are the input ports x comma y comma z and those are the defaults the output port is what you're returning simple right i'm glad you thought so it is simple so this is zero touch 101 uh, in the next lesson we will talk about how to create a node dynamo geometry with multiple outputs because that can get a touch tricky all right i'll see everyone next time and thank you for listening